Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT10 and BT10 offers us lots of new and powerful cards to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be the Armor Rush deck. So this is the uh, blue based uh, Vmon centered Armor Rush deck utilizing Vmon and his armor sets to try to be as low to the ground and aggressive as we possibly can with some good use of uh, color based synergies and Royal Knight based synergies to uh, be able to make our higher level Digimon as powerful and effective as we need them to be when we actually utilize them. So going over the deck starting off with the Digitama I'm going to be running four copies of Upamon as the main Digitama. So what's making Upamon so good is the fact that he has a nice when attacking inheritable ability where if the opponent has a Digimon in play with no Digivolution sources, which is entirely possible, then we get to draw one card, basically punishing the opponent for certain lines of play and certain actions that they're forced to take anyway. And then uh, the fifth Digitama of the deck I'm going to be running is going to be one copy of uh, the brand new Baby Dumon for that similar style of ability to try to help us draw cards and punish the opponent for some of their actions that sometimes they're just going to end up doing anyway. So uh, Baby Dumon has this inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn, similar to Upamon. If the opponent has two or more Digimon in play, then we get to draw one card. So instead of punishing them for hard playing some of their Digimon, Baby Dumon punishes them for having having Digimon in general, so it's just more easy ways at to being able to draw cards, and uh, being a low to the ground aggro style of deck, drawing cards is usually a good thing to try to maintain our aggressive capabilities. Next on to the rookies, I'm going to be running three copies of Vmon. So uh, this is uh, going to be the uh, Imperial Dramon starter deck version of Vmon, and this is just going to be one of the decks digging or searching tools. So he has this nice uh, on play ability where we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck, add one card with free and its traits from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. And a lot of our Digimon in this deck are free typed, so it's going to be helping search for basically anything level four or lower, which is all of the Digimon we're generally trying to use anyway. And then the other searching or digging tool is going to be three copies of the BT8 version of uh, Vmon, and he has a little bit of a different searching criteria. So his on play ability states that we get to reveal the top four cards, so one extra card over the other one, and we could add one two color card with a blue in its colors from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. So he's mostly going to be looking for our mid-level Digimon to be able to uh, try to make the use of our armors as consistent as we possibly can. And the crazy thing about this card is it's not specifically stating it's just Digimon, so we could search out our two colored options and tamers that also fit this criteria. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Vmon. So uh, this is uh, the BT3 version of Vmon, and this is one of the best uh, cards to be extra aggressive with on a rookie body, just because he has the built-in jamming ability. And then uh, the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Vmon. So this is uh, the uh, All Force starter deck version of Vmon, and even though we're not trying to utilize his warp ability, although we could if we really wanted to, we're actually just trying to use him for his inheritable ability of when attacking, not limited to once per turn. If you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, then we get to draw one card, acting as another good source of a uh, card draw. Next on to uh, the level fours, I'm going to be running four copies of Lydramon. So Lydramon is a uh, green and blue Digimon, and he could Digivolve off of any Vmon for two, which is why we're running all Vmons on the low end, so that way we don't have to suffer the downside of having to pay three for him if we're going to be running any green Digimon. Then on top of that, he has the Armor Purge ability, which is basically all of these armor forms built in protection, where if they were to be deleted, then they basically just uh, de-digivolve themselves back down into whatever's underneath, which is most of the time going to be our rookies. Then uh, for using Lydramon, he's one of the better control tools for this deck, especially against the opponent's low level Digimon, because his wind digivolving ability states that we could suspend one of the opponent's Digimon that's level 4 or lower, so it's ideally going to try to suspend their low level blockers, so that way our Digimon can freely and safely aggress into the opponent's security, but we could use this to try to beat up their floodgates if we really need to, or anything that's basically equal size or smaller, without the fear of losing our Digimon. 
Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Flame Dramon. So Flame Dramon, again, digivolves off of any Vmon for two. Otherwise, we'd have to digivolve them for three on top of a red Digimon, which we're not doing. So we're just trying to take the most efficient route to be able to use our Flame Dramon. Then he has the Armor Purge ability for, again, that built-in protection. And his when attacking ability for actually utilizing the card makes him one of the most aggressive cards in the deck, just because he's going to be giving himself plus 3,000 DP. So this buff does transfer over to uh, our low level Digimon if he does get popped in case we have the ability to restand and reuse our Digimon. But even just as Flame Dramon swinging, he's going to be swinging for 8,000 as a level 4, which is pretty decent while being in the color combination of blue and red. And then the last uh, level 4 of the deck is going to be uh, 4 copies of Magnamon. So Magnamon is kind of the big center point on how the deck wants to function, especially with one of the new tech and tools they added into the deck to be able to uh, utilize him in various different ways. So he's going to be an easy uh, climb into our level 6s, and then on top of that, he's going to already have good interaction and synergy with our other armor form Digimon. So we could Digivolve him for 4 on top of a blue or yellow Digimon, or we could Digivolve him for 3 on top of a Vmon, instead how powerful this card is because this card is also going to be one of the main defensive backbones into the deck by naturally having the blocker ability. Then he also has the armor purge ability for some built-in protection and on top of that his wind digivolving ability states that we get to unsuspend this digimon so if our digimon was suspended due to an attack and then it was armor purge then we could unsuspend it and leave him up as a blocker or potentially multi-swing depending on what we want to do with the card. Then this digimon gets plus 2000 dp until the end of the opponent's turn for each card with armor form in its traits in our trash so he's also going to be helping dp boost himself for again either extra offensive plays or extra defensive plays. Next, on to the level 5s, I'm only going to be running two copies of Chimeramon. So Chimeramon is going to be the deck's big DNA just because it actually is going to try to take use and advantage of all of these different colors. Having two level 4s on the field isn't necessarily the hardest thing in the world to do just because, well, the majority of the deck is going to be level 4 and uh, because of the armor purge ability, it makes it harder for the opponents to be able to clear or want to clear our Digimon just because they're going to have to basically kill it twice. So what he's doing is he has a DNA Digivolution condition for zero into Chimeramon, and then Chimeramon will be treated as a new Digimon to be extra aggressive with. Or we could Digivolve him the slow way and Digivolve him for four on top of literally any of our level fours just because of that rainbow evolution. Then for just Digivolving up into this card, we still get his Wind Digivolving ability where we get to place a level 5 or lower Digimon from our trash underneath this Digimon's Digivolution source, and then up to 4 of the opponent's cards get minus uh, 1000 DP for each of uh, the different colors that this Digimon has until the end of the turn. So he's going to be uh, trying to debuff uh, the opponent's Digimon to ideally try to delete them just because we actually can make him uh, a whole bunch of different colors because all of our level 4s are 2 colors in different color combination. On top of him already being his own color of white to add it to that count. Then what's making the when digivolving ability even stronger in giving him all of the colors is his secondary ability where during your turn this Digimon is treated as having all colors in its digivolution source. So uh, ideally with two uh, level fours of different colors that's going to be an easy way to use all four colors uh, to be able to make this Digimon extra aggressive because while this Digimon has four or more colors then he gets a plus 4000 DP making him a level five swinging for 12,000 which is pretty Pretty strong. And then as far as the level 6s go in the deck, I'm only going to be running up 4 copies of Magnamon X Antibody. So Magnamon X Antibody, we could Digivolve off of our Chimeramon as long as our Chimeramon has any inheritable sources for 3, but most of the time what we're going to try to do is just Digivolve off of our Magnamon for 4, so that way we could try to skip that level 5 stage entirely and make the most use out of our Magnamons. And then what we're trying to do with this card is this is another very aggressively defensive Digimon where during the opponent's turn, when an opponent's Digimon attacks, if this Digimon has armor form in its traits or X antibody in its uh, Digivolution source, then we get to switch the attack to this Digimon. 
So ideally, he's a little bit better than Blocker because one, he doesn't actually have the Blocker ability. So anything that's specifically targeting Blocker doesn't affect this card at all. And two, he could just constantly be able to redirect the attack, making it so that we can have multiple instances of this type of ability to just shut out a lot of the opponent's potential aggro while we're trying to aggress because he doesn't need to be in an unsuspended state in order to use this effect. And then on top of that, uh, his all turns ability is actually pretty decent, where when this Digimon would be deleted, we get to place this uh, Digimon on the top of our security stack at face down and prevent that Digimon's deletion. So it's basically armor purge plus, where instead of it going to the trash, it's just going to our security to make our security even more threatening. And the fact that it is recovering us and we're an aggro based deck means that we have the ability to try to deal more damage than what the opponent can deal back to us. And then the last uh, Digimon in the deck is going to be two copies of Jessmon GX. So uh, Jessmon GX is a pretty powerful card to use inside of this deck just because uh, Magnamon X Antibody and Magnamon are both Royal Knights. So even though he's going to be off color, we still can Digivolve him for five on top of a level six with Royal Knights in its traits, which is going to be our Magnamon X Antibody. Then his Wind Digivolving ability is pretty decent, where we get to place uh, one Digimon card with Royal Knights in its traits uh, with a play cost of 13 or less from our hand or trash uh, underneath uh, this Digimon. Then we get to activate uh, one of the placed Digimons when Digivolving abilities, and then this card will gain Blitz on top of that. So we're going to be using this to basically shove at Magnamon underneath, get his Wind Digivolving ability to give him some really powerful boosts and unsuspend the Digimon. So that way we could swing with our X antibody, Digivolve him into Jessmon GX. Then Jessmon GX is going to tuck underneath the Magnamon, unsuspend him, and so that way we could swing again if we really wanted to, on top of him getting a whole bunch of big boosts. And then... On top of that, he has a nice all turns ability that also makes him a really good aggro and defensive tool, where while this Digimon uh, has a card with Royal Knights in its Digivolution source, then it gains the piercing ability, the blocker ability, and security attack plus one for each card. So by default, ideally, we're going to be trying to have uh, two or three Royal Knights underneath, just because we're going to try to have our... Uh, Magnamon X Antibody, which is a Royal Knight, and then one to two Magnamons underneath. So he's going to be a very powerful Digimon to try to swing with, or if we need to, again, just leave up as a good blocker just because of all of the buffs that he could gain off of our Magnamon. Next, on to the options, I'm going to be running uh, one copy of Ice Wall because, well, we can only run one copy of this card because of how good it is at taxing the opponent's attacks uh, to try to stop them from actually being able to aggress onto us. So for the low cost of one, its main ability states that all of the opponent's Digimon gain the effect of when attacking lose to memory until the end of their turn. So it again just is trying to stop the opponent's aggression with a nice security ability of gaining to memory to try to anti-tempo the opponent even on their turn when this card is checked in security. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Blue Memory Boost. So uh, Blue Memory Boost is just another searching consistency tool on top of the fact that we could use uh, the delay ability to gain some extra tempo later on to make more powerful plays possible, like line up our Jessmon GX. So what this card is doing is it's searching the top four cards of our deck for any blue Digimon from among them, and then that'll go into our hands. Then this will go into the battle area for its delay ability uh, at a later turn to gain us to memory, and its security ability at worst is just going to put it into the battle area so we could still gain that to memory when we need to. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Megadeth. So Megadeth is going to be the deck's big hard removal, and this is one of the best big hard removal cards in the game, just because of how cheap it is for us to use, and if it comes out of our security, it's still going to be very devastating for the opponent, depending on what their board state is. So at least uh, we get to use its main ability, where we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down, and then bounce uh, one of their suspended Digimon uh, back into their hand. So if they have multiple Digimon, we could potentially... Uh, bounce uh, one that's already suspended and suspend another one down to prevent it attacking or we could just do it all on one target and suspend uh, and bounce that same Digimon with the security ability activating its main while also being in the two color combination to be searched off of our Vmon from BT8. Uh, Next, I'm going to be running uh, three copies of Fire Rockets. 
So Fire Rocket is what's making this deck as aggressive as we can possibly make it, just because it's a very cheap card to allow our Digimon to deal even more damage than they normally would. So for the low cost of one, it's ordinarily a red option, but we could use it ignoring its color requirements as long as we have a Digimon with armor form in its traits in play, which is basically going to be any of our level fours. Then uh, what we're trying to gain out of the card is uh, the main ability where one of our Digimon with two or more colors gains security attack a plus one for the turn. But the fact that adding extra security attack, it means that they can deal more damage is generally what we're trying to gain out of the card. And its security ability is still actually pretty decent where we could delete one of the opponent's Digimon with blocker. And then the last uh, option of the deck is going to be two copies of Awakening of the Golden Knights. So what this card is doing is it's another option card that allows us to use it regardless of its color requirements for just having an armor Digimon in play. And its main ability states that we get to Digivolve one of our armor form Digimon into a Magnemon from our hand, ignoring its Digivolution requirements without paying its memory cost. Then that Digimon uh, that Digivolved with this effect can't have its uh, DP reduced until the end of the opponent's turn, so it's just allowing our uh, Magnemon X antibody to be able to Digivolve on top of any of our level 4s, not just specifically our Magnemon. Then its security ability states that we get to return one card with Magnemon in its name from our trash back into our hand, so that way we could try to make the most out of our Magnemons and our Magnemon X antibodies. And then lastly, onto the Tamers, I'm going to be running two copies of Davis. So Davis is going to be the deck's dedicated memory fixing tamer to try to make sure that our memory is always set to three if it's ever less than three. And Davis is going to be a fantastic uh, digging or searching tool himself just because he has the on play ability where we get to reveal the top three cards, add a Digimon with a blue in its color and add a Digimon with green in its color from among them into our hand and then the rest go to the bottom. So this could potentially uh, draw us two cards as long as one of those cards is going to be a Lydramon. But the fact that it's just helping with the overall consistency and making our plays as uh, effective as we possibly can makes him still a very desirable tamer. And then the last card and last tamer of the deck is going to be uh, two copies of Davis and Ken. So Davis and Ken is an extra way for us to gain some nice extra memory, just because at the start of our main, if we have a blue Digimon in play, we get to gain a memory. If we have a green Digimon in play, we get to gain another memory. And if we have uh, both in play, uh, then we get to gain two memory off of this card, so that way we have extra ways of being able to have a solid amount of memory to do whatever we need to do. And then on top of that, uh, the ability that we're trying to utilize this card just makes a lot of our Digimon extra aggressive because uh, of his ability where during your turn, when one of your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon with two or more colors, then we get to suspend uh, this Tamer down to unsuspend that Digimon. So the idea is to swing with our level 4s, have the armor purge pop, then we get a Digivolve into a new level 4, suspend this Tamer to unsuspend that Digimon, to then be able to swing again with, to make extra aggressive lines of play. And then the crazy thing is this works with our higher stage Digimon as well, because it's just asking for two color synergy, making this one of the best Tamers in the deck to use, especially since it's already in two color combinations of blue and green, to be able to turn our Mega Death online when we don't have any Digimon, in play, and it's a good card to be searched off of our BT8 Vmon as well. There's still a lot of room for customization into the deck to really uh, figure out what tech and tools that you want to incorporate into the deck to make it your own. So if you wanted to, you could think about utilizing some other Vmons. We do have uh, the uh, BT2 Vmon to help us draw cards when we're unsuspending, and we do have the uh, EX1 Vmon that gains us a memory when we're unsuspending our Digimon, which is something the deck seldomly does already, but the fact that they're also both Vmon could also just help with the overall flow and functionality of the deck as well. Then we could think about dipping into a couple of uh, hybrid based Digimon just to act as some alternate win conditions because they could Digivolve off of our Tamers when we break all of the opponent's security, just putting even more pressure onto the opponent. Then we do have some other armor Digimon in blue that we could think about utilizing. These are going to be a little bit more expensive for this style of deck to use because we're not using it with the intended level 3, but the fact that we still have access to them is still pretty nice at being able to customize the deck to what we need it to be. 
Then if we're taking a more DNA digivolution route and trying to use more DNAs, we do have uh, some uh, level 4s that could hard play for 3 with their respective uh, level 5s to accompany them. So if you want to, to just have an armor Digimon sit on the field, hard play the Stingmon to DNA into Pyeldramon to do Pyeldramon things. Or we do have Inkilamon as uh, the yellow one, and then that allows us to easily use uh, Shakuamon. Then we do have some sister mons that we could think about playing just because we're trying to take advantage of some Royal Knight synergies wanting to dip into Jessmon GX a little bit. So the brand new BT10 version of sister mon is one of the better ones so that way we could try to uh, climb our stages as efficiently and quickly as we possibly can. And then looking back at our Vmon lineup, because we are running the starter deck version of uh, Vmon that supports All Force, we actually could think about utilizing All Force, and uh, the starter deck version of All Force is a really decent card to combo with Jessmon GX, just because he is another Royal Knight, he does have a good Windage Evolving ability for our Jessmon GX to take advantage of, but we also have various other Royal Knights in blue that we could think about playing as well. Then a good splashable card that could go in virtually any deck if you don't feel like running Jessmon GX is going to be Death Xmon just because he reduces his own play cost, he's acting as some good uh, control for the opponent's field the turn we play him and constant control for him just sticking around. Then we do have uh, other level 7s that we could think about utilizing. So we do have uh, the BT5 Omnimon as another good uh, level 7 that's also a Royal Knight. That's also an alternate wing condition just because unsuspending himself in Blitz just gives us an extra free attack even if the memory does pass over onto the opponent's side. And then we do have Imperial German Paladin Mode as just another generically good level 7 for us to utilize. Even though he's a little bit expensive, he's still just a really strong card in his own right. Then we do have various solid options in blue to think about running. I'm only going to be highlighting Hammer Spark because it's just one of the most generic blue options that we have at gaining some extra tempo and possibly taking away some extra tempo against the opponent. And then we do have more armor-based options that we could think about running. So I'm going to be, again, highlighting armor texture just because it's highlighting the synergy to be able to swap in and out of our forms. But we do have another option to act as some solid removal on top of just two color synergies we could think about leaning into. And then we also have X Antibody as a option to think about utilizing to try to anti-tempo in our security and try to make the most out of our Magnamon X Antibody. But for the most part, this is just my interpretation on what a BT-10 version of Armor Rush is going to look like, and it, even though you don't necessarily need to rely super heavily on Jessmon GX, the deck is still just a very powerful deck having lots of really solid customization and flexibility on the type of cards that you could run, on top of the fact that it has some very good uh, offensive plans and defensive plans rolled all into one. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.